Man, I think Stuart Haas Racing is officially legit. How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. So I just got done watching the STP 500 from Martinsville and I gotta say it was a race that didn't really meet my expectations in terms of, you know, I expected it to be more eventful than it really ended up being. But I gotta say while there wasn't a whole lot of yellow flags, really weren't that many tempers, this race did have a couple of saving graces that I think made it a great one to watch. And so here this evening I'm gonna give basically a recap of the race and talk about the most noteworthy things I saw coming out of it. So let's get to it. Firstly, once again, Fords dominated. I mean, first half of the race, it was more the Penske Fords with Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, and even Joey Logano up there in the top five making some noise. But then after Ryan Blaney won stage two, we saw the Penske Fords fade just a little bit and the Stuart Haas Racing Fords step it up a little bit. We had Kevin Harvick into the top five. Obviously, Clint Boyer led the most laps in the race. So second half of the race definitely went more towards that team, which I thought was interesting how, you know, the Fords in general were still pretty good, but there was a pretty big switch between the Penske and the Stuart Haas Fords kind of around the halfway point. Toyota was decent throughout. Uh, I mean, you had Kyle Busch always up in the top five. Denny Hamlin had a top five car, won the first stage, then he had an incident with Kevin Harvick that really hurt his finish, but he had a top five car. So did Truex for most of the day. Chevrolet continuing to struggle, and so far we have not really seen gains from Chevy. Kyle Larson was a no-show. Jimmy Johnson briefly cracked the top 10, but even he finished outside the top 10, so not a great day for him. Chase Elliott ran outside the top 15 for a lot of the day. He snuck into the top 10 at the very end to have an okay day. But yeah, the best running Chevy driver for most of the race was probably AJ Allmendinger. <laughs> so in other words, things not looking great for Chevrolet, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The big thing I wanna focus on in today's episode is Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer, gosh, it's been a long time coming, 190 races, 190. His win at Martinsville this weekend was his first win since he was with MWR in 2012. This is his first win with the Gen 6 car. And Fox Sports pointed out an interesting tidbit, a little interesting detail. Clint Boyer is currently the only driver to have won three races in the Cup Series with the top three manufacturers. And Fox Sports noted an interesting tidbit. He's the first driver in NASCAR to have won a race now with the top three manufacturers. So that's kind of cool. Clint Boyer is always one of the most, I guess you could say likable. He's one of the most just kind of laid back drivers in the garage area. You know, he had his fallout with Michael Waltrip Racing back in the day, which you know was kind of clouded in scandal to some extent, which wasn't a great look. But then he, he, he worked his way back up and then once he had to go over to H. Scott Motorsports and run a year with them in a terrible race car, he felt bad for Clint Boyer because he knew his talent was being wasted. But now he's in his second year with Stuart Haas Racing. And last year, Stuart Haas Racing was good, but they're not, they were not where they are today. And Clint Boyer ran okay, should have made the playoffs, but because of our system, he didn't. Before this season started, I talked about how Clint Boyer, this was a big year for him. He needed to kind of make a big jump. I expected him to make the playoffs this year, and I thought if he didn't make the playoffs, that would be a huge, a huge negative look. Really missing the playoffs this year would have been a huge failure for Clint Boyer. I predicted he'd win a race, and he's gotten that win. He is currently in the playoffs, and will probably make the playoffs, barring anything crazy going on. So good for him, and he was sure celebrating like he had just finally made the playoffs for the first time in so long. And you know, Clint Boyer's success here at Martinsville, as well as Kevin Harvick already winning three races this year, Stuart Haas has won four out of the six races this year, and on some pretty different types of tracks. Stuart Haas Racing's dominance, we start to maybe ask the question, could Clint Boyer be a championship contender. I mean, he's had great years in the past. 2012 was a good year, but we've never really considered Clint Boyer a top championship contender. But maybe now's the time. I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. He's not there yet, but they are making gains faster and faster, and they really aren't showing any signs of slowing down. I mean, even Kevin Harvick, who, you know, had a good car last weekend at Auto Club before he wrecked himself, had another top five car at Martinsville this weekend, which is at a completely different racetrack. He still had a great day. So Stuart Haas Racing, you could make the case, has had maybe the best car at every race this season. Just don't forget, Eric Almirola was leading with less than half a lap to go in the Daytona 500, so Stuart Haas Racing has been almost unbeatable. Right now, if you ask most people who've been watching the races this season, I'll bet most people would say Kevin Harvick's the championship favorite, but could Clint Boyer, could Eric Almirola, could even Kurt Busch creep into your top five, top six considerations? Could we see all four Stuart Haas drivers in the final eight? It's early to be making these predictions, but hey, I think it's time to start thinking about it and start at least keeping an eye on how the Stuart Haas racing team progresses because right now, we thought they might have peaked a couple weeks ago when Harvick was winning every race. It looks like they still haven't peaked because now Clint Boyer might win every race. I'm getting ahead of myself, I understand. It was just one win at Martinsville, but it was a dominant win. And for a guy who hadn't won a race in five, six years, for him to dominate this race the way he did, you just don't see a guy 
do that very much. Usually when a guy leads 215 laps in a race, you, it's like Truex or it's Harvick, somebody who's won a bunch of races that year, you know, somebody who you expect to win a bunch of races. You don't really expect a guy like Clint Boyer or like a guy like Jamie McMurray or Austin Dillon to pop in and lead 215 laps. That'd be a pretty big deal. So yeah, I'll take it with a grain of salt, but I am super excited for Clint Boyer because I've always liked Clint Boyer. You know, I'm, you know, I, I wouldn't call myself a huge Clint Boyer fan, but Clint Boyer, like I said, he's one of the most laid back guys in the garage area. He's just likable, you know, and you could just see how much this win meant to him and his team and everyone around him, the way he was celebrating it, the way he's doing burnouts in the middle of turn three. I don't know don't know where that came from, but God, it's just not, it's, it's hard to not enjoy it when a guy like Clint Boyer wins a race from time to time, you know? So anyway, shout out Clint Boyer, as if you need my shout out, but good job. Like I said earlier, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, tempers flaring after this race the way we've kind of become used to seeing at Martinsville in years past. I mean, we saw Harvick brake checking Denny Hamlin for no reason and really ruining the 11 cars day, so that, he might have something coming for that. But other than that, we saw some beating and banging, we saw Austin Dillon take out whoever it was, McMurray, just spin him out, you know, we, we saw a little bit here and there, but nothing super duper noteworthy, so. Yeah. I think it, maybe it's smart on NASCAR's part to have a week off between Martinsville and Texas because that's an extra week for a lot of these people to maybe cool off a little. Not saying that there's going to be any retaliation for anything that happened on Sunday. Probably not, but you know, at least gives everyone you know a nice little cooling off period. The other big thing I want to talk about, and it's continuously been a theme this season in the Cup Series, but it's how the young drivers are doing or not doing, if that makes any sense. We saw some different drivers, some different young drivers kind of up there in the top 10 this week that we haven't always seen yet this season at least. But I gotta say, I was definitely disappointed by a lot of them. The most disappointing thing was that Bubba Wallace never really got a chance to show us what he could do. I mean, he drove himself up into the top 20, was hanging out in the top 20 early in the race before tire issues, sent him multiple laps down, sent him to the garage area, really just... We never got a chance to see what Bubba Wallace could do, and that's disappointing because you got to believe that he had this race circled on his schedule. He's won here twice in the trucks before. You had to believe that Darrell Wallace Jr. was thinking, hey, now's my chance to go out there and maybe show that I'm that, that run at Daytona wasn't a fluke. Maybe get a top 10, maybe a top 15 at least. It felt like maybe that was what could have happened until he had his tire issues and whatnot, so that was definitely disappointing, but I can't put that one too much on the driver. As for a lot of the other young drivers, you know, Chase Elliott. What happened? I don't mean to be overly dramatic. He did come back to finish ninth, but that was really the highest we saw saw him run all day. Like I said earlier, most of the race, he was outside the top 15. And Chase Elliott's a guy who almost won here last October. So a lot of us, myself included, thought he would be a safe pick for a top five, top six run. But no, didn't, didn't really happen. Kyle Larson, another driver we thought might be okay, he finished 16th, which really un Kyle Larson like the Gibbs guys like Jones and Suarez also didn't really impress I thought Suarez was gonna have a better day he was good in practice I thought he'd have a solid day but both of them were outside the top 15 for almost the entire race so, so disappointing William Byron again 20th so yeah this really just kind of had me negative I, I keep wanting these young drivers to do really good because I want us to have some new faces to talk about I don't want to keep talking about Harvick and and Keselowski and Kyle Busch each week but still just a little disappointed. But, like I said, there was a couple drivers in the top 10, in the top five this weekend's race that we haven't really seen run quite as well. Specifically one, Alex Bowman. I'll give Alex Bowman some credit. He finally, finally got his first top 10 of the season, finishing seventh, which, hey, Martinsville is a tough track to stay, keep your nose clean at, you know, and Alex Bowman did just that, so credit to him. I did not expect him to have that great of a day at Martinsville, especially how he kind of underperformed at Phoenix, a track where everyone was like, oh, he's gonna be great at Phoenix. He's great at Phoenix, and he really wasn't. So I was skeptical about him coming into Martinsville, but hey, he proved me wrong. Good day for Bowman. And then the other driver, I guess less surprising, this one's not really that surprising, was Ryan Blaney, who won a stage, finished third. I guess the only reason it's surprising is because I didn't really, I didn't really think of Alex, Bo or as, as Ryan Blaney as a great short track at Martinsville kind of driver. But obviously those Penske cars, especially in the first half of the race, were pretty strong. He and Keselowski were both up in the top five. Blaney won that stage, and I'll, I'll give Ryan Blaney credit. I mean, he's a young driver, not too much experience. He's driving good equipment, obviously, but I just didn't think of him as that great of a short track driver. Maybe I'm just dumb and need to go do my research again, but hey, solid day. Given how bad a lot of the other young drivers were and how a lot of them were just no-shows throughout most of the race, I'm going to give Ryan Blaney a lot of credit, and Alex Bowman too. We've got a week off coming up here before we go to Texas Motor Speedway, so I I'm gonna save some other stuff for later in the week for other episodes, because I wanna talk a little bit more about the young drivers and how they've progressed this season, and I wanna talk about a few other things, So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that for later in the week, because otherwise I'm, I feel like I'm not gonna have much to talk about for two weeks. So anyway, that is, that is my show. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching, talking a little bit about Martinsville. Give your takes on Martinsville down below. Do you think it was a good race? I gotta say, I was a little disappointed by this race. I, I had high hopes going into Martinsville. I thought it'd be a little bit more dramatic, but 
you know, we didn't see too many yellow flags. We saw some intense racing, but I just felt like it was too hard to pass, you know, for position especially. You had too many cars just stuck behind each other for too long. I feel like Martinsville has become kind of almost like a two-groove racetrack, which usually I like. At most tracks, I like tracks that have multiple grooves where you're not all just fighting for one lane. But I think Martinsville, part of what set it apart from other tracks, especially tracks like, I feel like, New Hampshire or like Dover, was that it was only a one-groove track that really you can, you all have to go for the same real estate and that can lead to a lot of problems. And I feel like last year or two, Martinsville has kind of become a two-groove racetrack, honestly. At least, if you're not handling that well, you can move up a little bit and at least make it very, very difficult to pass. You know, you're not going to make that many great lap times, but you're going to make it very difficult to pass you and I feel like that's kind of what what I saw at Martinsville this weekend is since since everyone wasn't just trying to pile onto the bottom you didn't see as much contact you didn't see as much wrecks which you know you don't I don't you don't need a bunch of wrecks but you know you didn't just didn't see as many tempers flaring because you didn't see as many people getting in each other's way anyway that's my long-handed review of the race let me know what you guys thought very excited for Clint Boyer I gotta say he's in the playoffs at least for now you know should make the playoffs now which is great for him great for Stuart Haas racing and uh I couldn't be I couldn't be happier for the guy it's been a long time coming you know uh, but thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe for more episodes. Like I said, I'll do other episodes this week. Uh, it's a week off for NASCAR, so I'll have some plenty of time to take a step back and do some more thoughtful episodes, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, share, like, all that. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you later this week. Have a good one.